What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my studio. I'm Joseph Fincham, you're you, and today we're going to be doing some feathers, but we're going to be do something. We're going to be doing something else first. Um, while I was looking at the drawing of the moon and the sun after after the last live stream, forgetting what I'm thinking about here. Um, I was noticing how the the spot, the darker spot on the moon, really kind of helped the yin yang look of it. And, you know, let me switch my screen here. the The dark spot here really kind of helps with the yin yang look. And then I had the the darker red, but that was based directly off of the the reference photo that I was using. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dull down some of the dark orangey red and I'm going to bring it out into this area here to try and give it a little bit more of that yin yang look. So I hope this is all working. I hope you can see me. I hope you can hear me. I just got a notification from my own live stream. All right, excellent. Okay, so first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna try and dull out some of this reddish orange by putting yellow over it. Oh, and I almost forgot my uh, computer. Start live stream. If you're wondering what that was. Hi, Pat Kelly. Thank you for joining. Hi, Tara Giblin. Hi, Starving Artist. So, yeah. Uh, what I was just doing was I was telling she who will not be named. I don't want to set off anybody else's. Um, I was telling her to turn the light in the hallway outside of my studio to red, which allows other people in the house to know I'm live streaming and don't come in here. Doesn't mean they'll listen. But hopefully they will. Okay, so I'm dulling out the red. That's what I'm doing first. I know the stream says I'm going to be doing blue jay feathers. But sometimes you got to get a little bit of work done first. And since I noticed this after the stream last week. About four or five days after the stream. I figured I could... Do it now. It's already been sprayed with the texture fixative, so. Everything should go over it fairly well. It'll still be a little darker than the other spots where there are already yellows and reds. That's okay. Just as long as I don't ruin it, it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Just scratching a little yellow in here, a little orange in here. Lots of dust. Okay. Get my 
my powder blender out. Give it a quick blend, see how it looks. Okay, that's not too bad. Let me a little bit more of that light orange in some spots. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my darker orange. I'm just going to start adding some orange in here. I don't want it to be, you know, perfectly circular. And I want to leave some of that yellow and light orange shining through. with a little bit of the red.
just trying to get it to fade into the yellow RNG bit a little bit better. Come back in with the yellow and bring back some of our brighter cell marks. A little bit of white in there. that's that's better I think it I think it's a little uneven so let's try and I want it to be almost identical to the spot on the other side so Okay, so now let's jump into the feathers. Whoa, chat went crazy. Yes, starving it is now at 972, which is great, but two days ago it was at 974, so, eh, what are you going to do? Oh, that got cut off a little bit. Yeah, I have a very simple telescope, too. It's uh, not very good. It's a very small, thin one. And every time I've tried to use it, I've ended up looking at something just as it moves away from me. Because things in the sky move too dang quick. Okay. So our first feather... It's gonna come from right about here, but it's a it I, it has a slight curve to it, which I want, and it's the longest one. This is just roughing in where the center line will be. Let's see, I have, where did they start, okay, that's way too thin, this is going to have to be out here this side is wider than the other side bring it in there there's going to be some stragglers here but we don't really need those yet mm. Give it some color and then we'll blend it to get our base.
That ought to be a good start. Yeah, I don't know if Nick's coming. Last week he sent me a message to to say he remembered that it was Monday. Maybe this week he forgot it was Monday. Kind of hard to see over these sponges sometimes. And I do have a question for Nick, so I hope he shows up at some point. Unless, of course, any of you guys consider yourselves brush and pencil powdered blender experts. Because then I'll just ask you. I buy, I am by no means an expert. Okay, that's a good base for that one. roughing in that center line again with a slightly darker blue and the hard part is going to be getting the, the line definition I don't know I don't know if I should go into the line definition so quickly. Um, definitely need a little bit more shading, so. Let me do that before I try and get into 
line definition, as I say. Just working a little bit of that color into the edge where it's slightly darker in my reference photo than I don't want to use too much and go too dark too fast. That'd be a bummer. That's starting to look good. Knock that down a bit. Well, <clears throat> uh, where to go? Where to go? Uh, Pat Kelly said, "Ask away someone might know." Well, okay. So the question is about the background. Like I have the, I'm I'm pointing to my screen. Like you can see what I'm doing. In the reference photo, let's go to the reference photo. In the reference photo down here, behind the pine trees on the sun side is like a gradient, you know, orangey yellow background. And the question is whether or not I should do that whole thing before the pine trees or if I should try and do it after the pine trees. I know with the, once you spray the texture fixative, anything you put on top basically covers. But I'm worried about the green becoming too light if I do it over the orange. And I'm wondering how Nick would do it because Nick has way more experience with this stuff than I do. I'm going to need a very sharp point for this. So let me give a quick sharpen here. Oh, did I just whack my camera? Yes, I did. The downfalls of a tiny, tiny studio. That's better.
I'm just trying to build in the appearance of how the feathers are like, you know, they're basically all individual hairs. And I probably won't be able to smooth that out. And this is going to be tough. Let me turn this so I can get a better angle on it. And I got to resharpen already. Trying to keep a point while using sanded paper is not easy. Hmm. Let me start on this end this time. I'm keeping these ones a little bit wider to let more of the light blue show through. but trying to keep the same opposite angle. this and where did my light blue go Now I'm just trying to give us some variations in the color. Hard part, putting the black in. Well, not really that hard. They, they seem to be mostly evenly spaced, so I'll try and keep them evenly spaced. And the lighter side seems to fade out a bit as it goes. So let's see if I can... Mimic that a little bit by being very light on that side.
See if we can dull this out a little bit. Get some blue. Back to the black. And then we'll blend it. I'm just barely touching. Just trying to get rid of the, the pencil strokes. And then I'll go back over it to make it vibrant. Hopefully. <clears throat> hey, next here. So Nick, now that you're here, um, in regards to the orange and yellow background behind the pine trees on the orange side, on the sun side of the drawing, would you put that in before the pine trees or after? Like, would you put it in the entire section and spray it, then do the pine trees, or would you try and... Do the would you do the pine trees first and then use the color to fill in the area? To my reference. Black to one side. Which side? The darker side. 
Okay. Probably. Just in a few places. Where is my bright blue? I would put the orange colors first, approximately around the drawing, minimize areas where the green will go, but you can easily lift with needed eraser. I'll always go furthest forward. Okay, that makes sense. Hearing a cat, but I don't know where he is. He's not out the door. Are you out here, buddy? Okay. You know where the door is. Go to the door.
Really? Time to let it happen. Really? Come on. Come on. Uh, come on. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely spray after the orange. So yeah, that, that was Quiver, and she only came to the window because she knew I was in here. I think that's looking good. Darn cat, ain't that the truth? So. On to the second largest one. We're just going to start it the exact same way. This one's going to come a little bit more down this way. To, but with the same curve. So it's going to be a little odd because, you know, feathers, they don't really curve like that. But I like the way it looked in the original, so I'm just going to repeat that. Starting again with my center line. This one, I think, is a little, should be a little fatter than the other one. So it's going to... Come down like that.
try and get this one more saturated on the first shot. Not bad. And this one. On the right side. This one I'm trying to trying to keep the blend going in the direction of the the hairs, I guess you would say. And that probably needs a little more. A little wider. A little darker still. Here's my little tiny one. This side is going to get a little bit of lighter blue, or brighter blue, I should say, towards the center line. Mm 
That's good to know, Nick. Hello, Angela. I never said hi to Brent. I meant to say hi to Brent. I was I was taken somewhere else by your darn cat comment and forgot to say hi. Hello. Okay. We need a point on this. Start getting into some of these. The I don't know what to call them. The the hair lines. I mean, is that what you, what they're called? Are they hairs? I don't know. I don't know all that much about birds. And if you were there for... <clears throat> if you were there for uh, Lisa's stream on... Friday, where the entire two hours were spent talking about dogs, I was completely out of my element. To answer your question, Starving, because that's the way I did it when I originally did it, and it didn't even occur to me that I could do it any other way. <laughs> that's it. Plain and simple. And the other side, I'm going to use the other blue, just to try and get some, you know, some variation. Trying to sharpen just enough to get that point and not waste too much of the pencil.
might not be easy to see, but I'm trying to get like a little nick, not you nick, but a little, a little chip in the, in the feathers there. Just to give it, you know, some differentiation between the two. Is that a word? Differentiation? Barbs? That might work, I guess. Do my reverence. You got a bunch of loose stragglies on you, so. This blue. Oof. Let's try and keep all the shavings off of the drawing. Just slightly trying to blend that black in there. Because this one has far less defined uh, black markings on it. But they're still there. And they're shorter, too. They don't go all the way to the center on this feather that I'm drawing.
for the end bit. <coughs> it is a word now. Indeed. Okay, how am I going to do this one? The reference photo I'm looking at, the feather goes, like the white tip is at the top and the, the pointy bit is at the bottom, so... And while these areas are white, you can't really draw a white directly on white. So I'm adding gray first for the base. Then I'm putting a little bit of white over it. And then I'll blend it together. Uh, uh, Try and wipe some of that blue off. Give it a little test here. Back to our white. Give this our center line. And then we'll build our barbs. Is that what you call them, Nick? Build those off of that. I don't know if I'll be able to do this. I 
Banes and barbs. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. But there's like a, a small... Roll. That goes through there. With a slight blue tint. Yeah. It's kind of there. Hard to see. And just want to get that center line nice and defined. I can also, on this one over here, I noticed when I was just looking at my reference again, there's a gap in one of these spots. It's the darker side. Where these vein barb things seem to disappear. Eh. A little character. And the darker side gets to black very lightly. Now we'll move into the last one. Let me turn this a little. Mm. Right there ought to be good. Uh, where is... Where's my glassine? It's here somewhere. No, I have a piece. I have a whole roll of it, but... I don't want to rip off another piece when I already got a piece of... ready. Well, not ready, obviously, but... Where the heck is it? Got all this stuff shoved under here. Find it. Did I put it in the drawer? No. Okay, I'm ripping off a new piece. I'm cutting off a new piece. Just so I don't mess it up too much. Okay, so this one's tinier.
This one's tinier, and I don't know. And it doesn't even have, so I shouldn't even have done that, but it doesn't have a white tip. This one's going to have a blue tip. Well, blue and black tip, actually. And Nick, maybe you can also explain to me if this happens to you. Um, after I was done, I took it and I kind of gave it a shot with uh, some canned air to blow any excess dust off. But then when I sprayed it up here, it looks like some of the orange like pushed out and got stuck. So... I mean, luckily that part is going to be mostly green with an orange background anyway. But does that happen to you? Or does that happen a lot? Is that something I should be aware of and and plan on happening? Yes, I, I get that, and I get the blotting with the kneaded eraser. The thing is, when I went to spray it, it was still white. And it was like, when I sprayed it with the texture fixative, that the orange seemed to spread. And I, I didn't think that would be a, an issue after I sprayed it with the air to get rid of any loose dust. So, very strange. Sorry, I missed this one. I'm trying to picture what it would look like if the feathers were each a different color, and I'm thinking it would, wouldn't look as good. Random thought. I can... I can agree with that. Um, I figure the, the six flowers that'll eventually be in here will be enough extra color. And one of the reasons I do... I decided on the blue jay feathers originally is because I have like a family or a group of blue jays that nest in a tree in my backyard that I've never been able to get pictures of. I've tried. Believe me, I've tried. But the only camera I own is my phone and they're up in a tree. Not easy to do. Okay, so, 
drop my center line back in. Slightly darken the one side. Just to keep it consistent with the other ones. My little pile of pencil shavings here is getting a little too unruly. As you can see. I could and should do it directly over the garbage can, but I'm not. You can only rotate it so many times before you completely lose your point. Mm Oh, I've done that before too, Pat Kelly. I have absolutely positively done that before. <laughs> Stripe of white that's in there. There's a little bit of black. The black isn't totally necessary, but it 
it helps with the with the values and then <laughs> so this one has very well defined very well defined stripes but they're also a little bit of a strange shape because they they kind of have like an M shape to them. So they go up, come down a little right at the center, go up, and come back down. I don't know why all of these feathers are so different. I assume it's because they're from different parts of the bird. I know the white tipped ones generally tend to be the tail feathers or wing feathers. But I don't know why they have these shapes. Like I said, don't know much about birds. Nick looked up one thing and now knows more than I do. And this one has a lot of little stragglies all over it. Not just down here by the base. I don't know if that's because of damage to them, or they're just out of place from where they were. But I'm going to put them in anyway. I'm wiping off the tip of the pencil after each couple of strokes because I'm picking up the blue and I'm trying to make it white. So. Okay. And now I'm just going to adjust this a little bit make sure this kind of looks like it's going over it
And I can use this. Clean that out a bit. Okay. That's pretty much it. What time is it? Oh, it's only 4.30? Wow. Okay. Um, hmm. Maybe I can improve some of these thin lines a little bit. You know what? I did want to add a little bit of purple in here. So let's do that. Just a tiny bit. Hard to even tell it's there. But I know I'm going to have purple... in the drawing later because of the flowers so working a little bit in now shouldn't hurt too much might even just make it look like there's a slight shadow Trying not to lose the definition of the lines I already have. You throw some of the purple into that dark area. So that just so that it's not a pure black because it isn't in the photo. But I don't want to go over it with the blue and lose the darkness. So That's looking pretty good. How's it look from that end? Let me see if I can reposition a little bit and there we go. Looking good. Starving, I know that feeling all too well. 
I have one cat that is without a doubt a gravity scientist and just likes to whoop off it goes just realized you can't see what I'm doing That did not work. Eh, something's wrong. But yeah, I have one cat that, you know, does this. Like, oh, I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it. Whoop. Off it goes. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. So, the question posed to everyone is... And you, you can throw this in the chat right now, but I'd appreciate it more if you left a comment in the comment section of the video after it's done. But the six flowers I'm going to put in here. I need six flowers that are mostly round and not white. So, so far I'm looking at things like, like uh, Black Eyed Susan and I had a few others in mind and right now I'm drawing a complete blank. Um, Black Eyed Susan... Echinacea. Mm. What else? What else? I had... I had like a list of ten of them. And now I can't think of any of them offhand. Simple flowers like a wild rose... Could probably do a regular rose, but that might be a little more complicated than I want to get into. Um, <laughs> Newton reincarnated. I like that. That, yeah. That, that's my cat. That's, uh, Happy. Happy likes to do that. She's just, whoop, whoop. So, yeah. So, if you can think of any flowers for me that are round in shape, because the idea is that they have to go with a sun flare. So they have, I, I want them to be round. I mean, I could do crazy shaped sun flares, but it's not necessary. And I'd rather not do that. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, check out the Lockery MeWe group. There's one on the other place, too. The place that shall not be named. And, uh, I do have a new challenge up. It went up late, so it'll probably stay up a little late after the month is over. And hopefully I'll have one up when the new month starts this time. Um, I had an idea that I just didn't like the way... The way it was phrased... I guess. So it took me a little extra long to get that one out. Uh, this one is teeny tiny things. So draw something teeny tiny itty bitty. The example in the in the challenge photo is a piece of pollen on a on a on a flower leaf, and all you can see of the the flower petal 
is like the cells of it and this tiny little squid looking thing. And that's apparently a piece of polymer. But yeah, microscopic. That's what I'm thinking. Um, uh, what else? Check out the group. Yes, I said that. Hit the buttons, do the things, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And, uh, yeah. Any questions? From anybody? I'm open to a little, a little Joseph Fincham AMA. Try and keep that corporate logo out of the out of the video. No one wants that. Not without the. Well, good for you, Pat Kelly. Good for you. I I would do the same. But, unfortunately, I'm still involved with the group there, so. Gotta keep it open to keep it open. <laughs> no problem, Nick. We're pretty much done. If anything pops up, I can handle it. Any word on that Starlink thing yet? You got to get you some good internet up there. Thank you, SimMac. I didn't see you come in, and I apologize for not noticing you. Okay, let's wrap it up. No one's got any questions. So, thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time. We'll get started on some of these flowers that I don't know which ones I'm drawing yet. Okay, bye.